Hey everyone, welcome back. This video, we're going to begin our discussion on arrays and how to work with them. Now, make sure you check out the previous video if you were just jumping in here. That's going to give you the foundational layer for collections in general. That's where we talk about arrays, vectors, and templatized arrays. So highly recommended you check that video out. But if you don't want to, that's fine. Let's just jump right in. But first, check out our sponsor. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. So what does an array look like? Well, this is a brand new file, so you can just start with me typing this out. First thing, we need to make a main function. That's going to look like that. And you can put the return zero if you want, but it will implicitly return zero if you don't put that. Now, in general, I just include IO stream because I tend to use that in every single example. So we're going to create a collection, specifically an array. And by the way, the term collection is a more general term to include arrays, vectors, and basically anything that can store multiple pieces of data in one variable. So if I say collection, I could mean any of those things, but in this situation, we're specifically talking about the boring standard C arrays. <laughs> so let's create one. It's going to look a little bit something like this. And it's usually a plural name, so it's clear that it's a collection. And then in here, you can put the number of elements you want to be able to contain. We'll go with 20. Now, a cool little trick, if you know the data ahead of time, you don't have to put this value here. You can leave that blank and you can assign it the values. So for example, we can put a 10, a 13, <laughs> a 54, and whatever we want the data to be. So this is a great way to basically fill the array, but the thing is, it'll only fill it to fit the amount of data we have right here. So in this case, it's going to make the size seven. So it'd be the same thing as making the size seven there. So this is a great option if you need to basically put all of the data in ahead of time, and you know that at compile time, maybe there's a select couple of options for some particular thing, but usually you don't know all of the data ahead of time, so instead you need to basically type in that data there, and my battery is low, so I should probably get a plug-in. Macs always tend to annoy me when it comes to battery because they give you about 30 seconds to get a plug-in before it shuts down, or at least that's my experience. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to work with this guesses array as is, and then we'll go through an example where we don't pre-fill it with data. So when it comes to the variable guesses, the square brackets are attached to it when we create it, but when we reference that array, you don't use the square brackets. So for example, if you wanted to pass this entire array to a function, you would just use the keyword guesses. So if somebody asks you what guesses is, the answer is an integer array. But oftentimes you are going to see that integer array with square brackets and some number. And this is basically a way to grab an element by the index. So for example, if we put the value three, that's going to grab the element with the index three. This is zero, this is one, this is two, and this is three. So it's going to give us the value 42. And this is an integer. So if somebody asked you what guesses index three is, it would be an integer. You may also hear this read as guesses of three. So basically the square brackets in a number can be read of some number, but you can basically call it whatever you want. Just be clear that you're grabbing the element inside of guesses. And because this is an integer, we can use it anywhere an integer is expected, including inside of an output. So we can try it here. When we run this thing, we can see we get the value 42. So it seems that we did it just like we were expecting. We can also modify the elements using that index. So for example, I could go down here and say guesses of three is now going to be equal to 300. Outputting it again, you can see that that value will now be updated. It first spits out 42 and then it spits out 300. So next thing I wanted to talk about is how to work with the array when we don't have that data already there. So for example, let's say we have guesses and it has the size 20. 
Well, now we need to manually put that data in. I'm gonna talk about filling an array from user input inside of a loop in a couple of videos, but for now, let's just do a single element. You can do that by saying guesses of zero and assigning it some value, or you can get it from standard input. So for example, we can say standard C in, sorry, and store that inside of guesses zero. So now when we output, we could output guesses of zero and see what the value is. When we run this, we put in a value 413 and you can see it outputs 413. So that is how you can assign a value if you want to assign each one manually in code, or you can do it from console input using this technic te technique, technique right here. Now one downside with these stupid darn arrays is that you might have a size bigger than the total number of elements inside of the array. So you might have the size 20, but you might only fill five of those spots. So sometimes you're required to keep track of how many elements are in the array, even though the size is right there. So you might do that with another variable. Usually you wouldn't call it size, you would call it something like number of elements, and then that could contain five. The reason you wouldn't call it size, because usually size indicates this value right here. It's the total possible size of the array. This is going to come up when we're working with loops. So now I wanna talk about how we can iterate through an array and print out each element. So I'm going to assign this a bunch of elements. Here, let's just do it the, the nice and easy way. Like that. And now, we're going to use a for loop. Typically you'll use a for loop for iterating through collections. We'll say int i equals zero. i is less than hmm, something, let's just call it size. And then i plus plus. Now if you're coming from other languages, you might be used to seeing something like guesses.size or guesses.length, but that doesn't quite work when it comes to C style arrays. Instead, we have to calculate that size. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable, call it int size, and how are we going to get this value? Well, we actually use this size of operator and we pass in guesses. That's going to give us the total size, which isn't quite what we want, but I just wanna show you guys. We're gonna output that. So we got the size and we're outputting it here. When we run this, we get the value 20 but there's five elements. So each element is taking up four of these numbers. So what are these numbers? These numbers are actually bytes. So the total size of guesses is 20 bytes. In order to get the number of elements, we actually have to divide this by the size of one element. So we could say divided by size of, you could say guesses of zero, if you wanted, sorry, guesses, plural. and now we get the output five. So that's how we can calculate the size. There's five elements, one, two, three, four, five. Now inside of our for loop, it's going to correctly reference that size and we should be able to output each element, like so. When we run this thing, you can see we get each element starting with 12. The five is not part of that, that's the size. So that's coming from this line and then it starts on 12, 43, 23, 43, and 23. Cool, now the thing you gotta keep in mind is that if the size of the array is larger than the number of elements, it's going to mess things up just a little bit. So to see this, I'm actually going to replace this end line with a tab just to make it a little cleaner. Keep it all in one line. When we run this thing, you can see we get 12, 43, 23, blah, 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 and then we get a bunch of these zeros. So that is basically just the default integer when the size is larger. And in this case, we have a size of 10, so it prints out 10 numbers. Oftentimes these zeros are gonna be useless and you're not going to want to use them. So we need a different way to keep track of where to stop. Size is not going to work in this case, so you might have a different variable such as int num elements, and that's going to be equal to five. And then for our for loop, instead of comparing the size, we can compare it to num elements. And now when we run it, we only get the first five elements even though the size tells us there's 10 elements. Another way you might see is to put a negative one. If for example, all the numbers are positive and a negative one would be unacceptable, then you might use a negative one as basically a flag to say we're done and you can case on that and see if the value is negative one. 
Not my favorite method, I'd prefer to keep track of the elements separately. But that is very similar to the way C-style strings work with using the null terminating character as basically a stopping point, so it's totally not unheard of. You might see that in your coding experience. So that, my friends, is my introduction to collections, specifically arrays and how to use them. Hopefully that gave you a really clear picture of how they work and their limitations. One more thing I wanted to throw out here is that this size thing, although it works, it also has its limitations because that's not going to work inside of a function call.